Kuang Chen and I were very close uh, from childhood. This, we're three years apart. He was older. I was the middle child. And then this, my younger brother, who's 10 years younger. Um, we grew up together in Hong Kong, and I think I very much idolized him. He was my older brother. He taught me so much about play, art, the world. We decided to go to New York together. I went for my dance career, and he came from Paris and joined me. And we began really as idealistic young starring artists in New York. So he and I arrived in New York in uh, 1978. And my parents would come and visit us from Vancouver, Canada. And of course, we always want them to take us to good restaurants that we couldn't afford to go to. And they took us to Windows on the World in the World Trade Center, where my, my brother was arriving later. He didn't have a suit, and the restaurant had a dress code, suit and tie. And so when we arrived at the restaurant, the maitre d' took one look at this Chinese man, handsome, wearing a Mao Zedong suit. And he immediately treated us, the entire family, as VIP, as emissary from China. But I think for Quang Chi, that moment became a very, very uh, much a kind of the light bulb moment, the revelation that in that suit, he had adopted an identity which became sort of in a way um, a power suit. It was the power of the suit to communicate to the world that he was of a country, of a nation, and became uh, an ambiguous ambassador. He believed that artists are, in a way, global citizens. He called his work East Meets West in this self-portrait series because he thought that the world was a um, all citizens should have the same values and uh, that artists are the best advocates for making the world a better place by having um, that kind of vision. And some of the shots, like in the lightning field, he was, you can see his hair is standing on ends from the static. His glasses, mirror glasses, or see the lightning flash. And then you see the lightning flash in the sky behind him. When he went to Holland, I mean, it's just like such a ridiculous image in the giant clogs and the lighthouse. And so his sense of humor comes through. Um, the Bordeaux bottle of wine, he was traveling on the train down to Marseille at, from Paris, and he saw that big wine bottle in Bordeaux, and he just said, he just like, I have to get a photo of that wine bottle. And he jumped off at the next stop and went back and captured that. So um, there, the, to capture each image and some of the jumping ones, for example, he had placed his camera, the Rolleiflex camera, uh, and he made his composition in the camera. So there's very little cropping involved. In other words, it's a very staged, very carefully crafted performance captured by the camera. He's a performative conceptual photographer. Uh, these photographs are, uh, in a way, you know, pre-selfies, pre-digital camera, and they were very labor intensive because he had to take the camera, tripod, lighting equipment, etc. These are almost like antiquated practices now. 
So in a way, the works speak for themselves. They deal with identity and who an artist is in the world. He was a very powerful, uh, exuberant, control freak, and incredible love of life, and that's what I adore him for. And his friends will tell you today, Huang was the most fun person, generous in spirit, and kind of like an example of someone who loved life and made art out of it in every way food travel fashion he uh, invented a dish when he was 16 years old called soul picasso s-o-l-e it was fish fillet of soul with melon balls cut in different shapes and <laughs> different colored melon so it was very artistic and delicious and that's that was Quan Chi he loved life and he had a short one didn't make it to 40 but he left us a lot a lot of work and um, a, a very big legacy in both physical objects and in spirit.